locus diagram of a system. So let's see what's the problem. So this is our problem. We are given the open loop transfer function of a unity feedback system. It is GS equals to K upon S, S square plus 4, 4S plus 8. And we have to sketch the root loci of the system. So let's solve this problem. Our first step is to determine the open loop poles and zeros of this system. So step one, determine the open loop poles and zeros of the system. Okay. So zeros, we have no zero in this system and poles, it will be s equals to zero and s square plus 4s plus 8 equals to zero. So solve this quadratic equation, obtain its roots, its roots are given by minus 4 plus minus under root of this b square that is 4 square 16 minus 4 ac 4 is into a is 1 and c is 8 so it is 32 upon 2 so s will be minus 2 plus minus 2 j so we have three poles s equals to 0 s equals to minus 2 plus 2j and s equals to minus 2 minus 2j. Three poles are there and no zero is present in this system. Okay. Now the number of poles is equal to the number of root loci branches. That is there are three poles. So there will be three root loci branches. And it is equals to 3. Now our second step is to find the angle of asymptotes. Okay. And what is the number of asymptotes? Number of asymptotes is equal to Number of poles minus number of zeros. Poles are 3 and zeros is there is no zero in the system. So there are 3 asymptotes. Now calculate the angle of the asymptotes. Angle is given by the formula theta. 2m plus 1 into 180 degree divided by p minus z. p minus z is what? Number of poles that is 3 poles and number of zeros is 0. So p minus z is 3. So the value of m will be 0, 1 and 2. There are 3 values of m because p minus z is 3 and m ranges to 0, 1 till we have P minus Z minus 1 that is 3 minus 1 or 2. So it will be 0, 1 and 2. So for various values of M we will find out the angle theta. So first for M equals to 0 theta will be 
2 into 0 plus 1 into 180 degree upon we have p minus z as 3. So theta will be this is 0 180 by 3 so 60 degrees. For m equals to 1 we have theta equals to 2 into 1 plus 1 into 180 degree upon 3. So theta will be 2 plus 1 3 it will be 180 degree. For m equals to 2 we have theta equals to 2m uh, 2m m is what 2 plus 1 into 180 degrees and divided by 3. So theta will be 4 plus 1 5 into 180 upon 3. So theta will be 300 degrees. So for various values of m we have obtained the theta. Okay, this is the angle of asymptotes. Now we will find the intersection of the asymptotes with the real axis. Now intersection point it is calculated by the formula x equals to summation of p minus summation of z upon p minus z. Okay and poles we have here as 0 then we have minus 2 plus 2j then we have minus 2 minus 2j and 0 is 0 upon p minus z that is 3 minus 0 it will be 3. So minus 2 minus 2 it will be minus 4 and plus 2j minus 2j they will be cancelled out. So it will be minus 4 by 3. Okay. This is p z upon p minus z. Okay, so x will be minus 4 by 3, so it will be minus 1.333. So it is the intersection of the asymptotes on the real axis. Now we will calculate the angle of departure. Angle of departure is given by we have this 180 degree minus 5p minus 5z. 5p is just the sum of all the angles subtended by all the other poles and 5z it is the sum of all the angles subtended by the zeros. So first draw the diagram that what is the location of the poles on zeros on the S plane. We are having a pole S equals to 0. Then we are having a pole this is minus 1, this is minus 2. So minus 2 plus 2j. So we are having somewhat here and here. This is plus 2j, this is minus 2j. Now we have to calculate the angle of departure. So what it will be? Join these two. Then we have this angle. So this was our first pole P1. This is P2 and this is our pole P3. So 5P1 it will be this and it is 135 degrees and for 5P2 this is 5P2 and it is 90 degrees. You can see here also you can get this by using the trigonometric techniques here. This is minus 2, this is minus 2 so it will be 90 degree and these angles they are 
45 degrees. So 180 minus 45, it will be 135. This angle is also 45 degree. This is 45. It's completed it is 90 degree. How we are getting it? We are applying the trigonometric techniques here. And then we are getting the values of the various angles. So calculating the departure angle. For pole P1. We calculate the departure angle for complex poles. So we are having two complex poles. So we will calculate the departure angle for pole P1 and pole P2. It will be 180 degree minus phi P minus phi Z. So phi D will be 180 degree minus 135 and minus 90 degree so we are having this as 135 degrees okay this is the departure angle similarly we will calculate the departure angle for the second pole It will be minus 135 degrees or we can say it will be 225 degrees okay so we have calculated the departure angles now we will calculate the that where the root locus branches they are going to intersect the imaginary axis so imaginary axis intercept it is calculated by there are two methods to calculate this intersection of the root locus branches with the imaginary axis. First is to put S equals to J omega in the characteristic equation and then solve that equation for the value of S. And then the second method is to use the root stability criteria. Here we will use the second method that is using the root stability criteria. First, we will write the characteristic equation of this system. So, characteristic equation is 1 plus Gs Hs equals to 0. So, putting the value, we are getting S, S square plus 4S plus 8 plus K equals to 0. So, our characteristic equation is S cube plus 4S square plus 8S plus K equals to zero so this is the characteristic equation of the system now form the root array using this characteristic equation we are having the highest power of s as q then s squared s1 and s to the power zero coefficient of s cube is one and then coefficient of s to the power one is eight then s square coefficient is 4 and s to the power 0 coefficient is k. So the next coefficient is obtained by multiplying this 4 into 8 that is 32 minus 1 into k that is k and divided by 4. Next coefficient is 0. Again for this multiply this with this and minus 4 into 0 is 0 divided by this term so we will get k here and the next coefficient is 0 so we have formed the root array for this system now for this system to be stable this first column elements they should be greater than 0 and this 32 minus k upon 4 it should be equals to 0 so 32 minus k upon 4 should be greater than or it should be equals to 0. So from here we will get the value of k as k less than equals to 32 and we have k by the last element this k it should be greater than 0. Okay. Now Using the elements of the row just above it, that is these 4 and k, form the subsidiary or the auxiliary equation. We have 
फोर एस स्क्वेर प्लस के इक्वल्स टू जीरो सो दिस इज आर ऑक्सिलरी इक्वेशन Now putting the value of k here, we will have 4s square plus 32 equals to k. So 4s square equals to minus 32, and we will get the value of s as plus minus 2.828j. Okay. So these values, these are the intersecting points on the imaginary axis. Now the real axis part of the root locus. it uh, we have only one root locus part so the we have only one root locus part on the real axis which is starting from s equals to 0 and it is going to Minus infinity on the negative real axis. So we have obtained all the parts of the root locus. We have obtained the intersection points. We have obtained the departure angle and the angle of the asymptotes. So let's plot the root locus of this system. this is the imaginary axis and it is the real axis okay and we have s equals to 0 this is and we have because we are having complex poles this is minus 2 plus 2j and this is minus 2 minus 2j as we are having the asymptotes and the branches for this so this will goes to intersect the imaginary axis at the point s equals to plus 2.8j and this will intersect the imaginary axis at s equals to minus 2.8j and it will goes to infinity k equals to infinity here also k equals to infinity now the asymptotes to these two branches it will intersect at a point we have these are the asymptotes and their intersection point is minus 1.33 this is k equals to infinity okay and this is starting from k equals to 0 this is also k equals to 0 and this was our real axis this imaginary axis this point was where it is intersecting it is plus 2j and this is minus 2j so this is the root locus of this system we have plotted it is starting from the pole going to infinity and these are the asymptotes which are intersecting on the real axis at some point so i hope this problem is clear to you thank you